Chapter 27 to 28. Planet Vegeta. I pop back into existence about 2,000 feet above the training grounds for the Super Strike forces, immediately dropping to the ground. As I land, I'm already pressing the buttons on my scouter to open up our private channel. Team, it's KLL. I need all of you on our training grounds in 10 minutes. Well, except for you, Kakarot. You're to remain off the planet for now, but I'll be meeting up with you later today. I say before disconnecting. I can sense my team jumping up all over the planet as they launch themselves into the sky, heading my way. I stand there waiting as each lands in turn, lining up in front of me. We're missing four members, three that died at the beginning of the battle with Sana and Kakarot, which leaves us with three members plus myself. I pace back and forth for a moment before turning back towards my team. Team, today is going to be the hardest day of training you've ever had. Yet, at the end of it, you'll thank me for it. I tell them. I see the grim determination on their faces. I've said this to them once before when I forced them all to learn instant transmission, teaching them to sense power levels planets away, to learn the different feeling each unique power gives off and learning to move your energy in the way that's needed to sync up with another person. They struggled. In the end, however, each and every one of them learned it, some faster than others, and they realized that I did actually know what I was doing. So to say it again today, to promise them a training session even harder than that one, was to tell them that I'd be pushing them farther past the breaking point than ever before. KLL, what are we learning today? Bara asks, I think for a moment before I begin. Each of you has the blood of the Scion race flowing through you, some more than others. What this means is that within each of you is a near infinite capacity for growth. I push slightly, my hair turning golden as my aura explodes around me. You are capable of far more than just about any other race in the entire universe. Even alone, you can be a force to be reckoned with. I start raising my power level, which at resting Super Scion was sitting at just above 300M. It doesn't take long for my power level to reach its current Super Scion max of 1.1B. I can see the amazement in their eyes at what I'm capable of in even my base form. Before, I say as I decompress my energy, forcing it into my muscles, causing my body to rapidly expand. This was the furthest I had ever pushed. With the help of Bara, I had forced my own body to basically cannibalize my energy, using it to fuel my strength. It made me stronger but slowed me down. For myself and you guys, this won't be that big of an issue. Using instant transmission, you can close the gap between yourself and most opponents. They nod, showing that they understand what I'm saying. With a pop, I'm behind Bara, my fist back, ready to smash into him. Another pop and I'm back where I originally was before they even had a chance to turn fully towards me. Let that sink in for a moment. That is what you'll be learning today. If you can make it this far, if you can transcend the limitations that your own body will place on you. I say as I begin to let the energy leak out into the air around. And it will. Pushing myself into those two forms were some of the hardest things I ever did. But if, and I mean if, you can manage it, the ground around me begins to shake, cracking, as the hard stone that makes up the field begin to shoot upwards into the air in pieces. The air sparks and flashes with the energy as I expel it all out, freeing myself from limitation. They are forced back, some going super scion to stop themselves from being blown away. I start yelling, expelling every bit of the energy my body contains as it all decompresses, the sparks around me a constant static barrage. If you can break past your own limits, if you can realize that your own body is imperfect, this is what awaits you, I tell them as I finish. My muscles are softly expanded, but not at all bulky. My hair is spiky, sharp, and standing nearly on edge. My aura has wrapped around me like a soft blanket of energy. This is the form of a scion that has ascended beyond Super Scion. I like to call it Super Scion 2. I explain, quoting Goku. I can see it in their eyes as each senses my true power level for the first time. The look of awe, even a smidge of fear, at realizing just how far they can still go. I nod before letting the transformation drop. Let's get started, shall we? Grand Kai's planet. I shall return to the Supreme Kai with this news, Kibito says, before disappearing using his own type of teleportation. The Kais are worried, very worried, that this may not be enough. The Grand Kai hops down from his tall chair, approaching the directional Kais who are still discussing things. North Kai, he asks, why yes Grand Kai? King Kai says, I need you to contact your Scion friend and warn him about Bu. Even if the Supreme Kai deems him unworthy of training, allowing Bu to absorb the entire Scion race would be very bad for us. He explains, of course Grand Kai, you're so smart to think of that. Why, I dash, King Kai says, beginning to blither. A scion, you say? Comes a voice from behind them. The Kais whip around, before dropping to their knees. El Lord Beerus. Grand Kai stutters out. What brings you all the way out here? Hmm. What were you saying about science, Grand Kai? Beerus asks. Uh, we, uh, Bu has been freed, Lord Beerus. We're trying to find someone in the mortal realm 
that may be able to stop him before he destroys everything. Grand Kai explains quickly. North Kai believes that a scion he knows may be able to do it. Do you say? Hmm. Where have I heard that name before? Beerus wonders, tapping his chin. No matter North Kai. Which of you is North Kai? West Kai immediately points at North Kai, backing away. Ah, yes, I remember now. I believe you once disappointed me. I would suggest not doing so again, North Kai. Beerus says as he approaches the still bowing North Kai. Now tell me, is this scion of yours a super scion god? Earth. High above the earth, seven large golden balls break through the atmosphere. Hurtling along, they quickly find their way to the one who has been waiting for them. Landing quite softly around Elder Muri, Kami can't help but smile at the sight. I see they have arrived, Elder Muri, Kami says. Right on time, too. They have indeed, Kami, Muri says, looking both saddened and happy at seeing them once again. As much evil has been wrought with them, he knows that the Dragon Balls may also be used for good. We can begin undoing the evil that Tull's brought to my planet now, Muri says, directing the Dragon Balls to swirl around him, lining up nearby. The past three months had been a much-needed time of peace for Muri. After the horrors that he had seen, experienced firsthand, time to recover was a gift. He would never forget watching the suns in the sky above flash red, as everything around him burned to ash. Of course, this hasn't been entirely a time of rest. He thought as Kami helped him to gather his things. Several times over the past three months, he had helped Kami rework the magic of their own Dragon Balls, to better suit the situations that they found themselves in. Where before Shinran could only revive someone once, requiring that they had died in the past year and never been revived before, the rules had very much been changed. Shinran could now revive someone if they had died in the past five years, and could do so three times. Where before Shinran could only grant a single wish, once a year, he could now grant a single wish, once every six months, or twice every year. A lot of time and effort had gone into these changes, but Muri felt that in time, the effort would pay off. Once they had finished gathering Muri's items, as little as there were, they once again moved outside to the large platform that made up Kami's lookout. Are you ready, Elder Muri? Kami asks. Nodding, Elder Muri turned to the gather Dragon Balls and began speaking in Namekian. Moments later, the Dragon Balls explode with light and energy, Purunga forming high above them. Purunga, I have much to ask of you this time, and for that I apologize. Is it within your power to recreate the solar system that contained the planet Namek, whole again, as it once was? He asked, hoping for the best. I shall try, Purunga says. Several moments pass, as his eyes glow red before they finally dim again. Your wish had been granted. What else is to be asked of me? He asks. Thank you, Purunga. The second thing I shall ask of you is this. I would ask that the Scion in Divaya, Prince of the Scions, be brought back to life. Muri says. Your wish has been granted. One wish remains. Purunga explains. Thank you again. For my final wish, I ask that you transport myself and the Dragon Balls to the recreated planet Namek. Muri says. He turns to Kami as Purunga's eyes begin to glow. Thank you, Kami, for all your help. Farewell, my friend. He says as he vanishes in a flash of light. Kami sighs, before beginning the slow trek back inside. Mr. Popo catches up with him, as they enter the only home they have ever known. Kami, do you regret not going with him? Mr. Popo asks. No, Mr. Popo. As much as I yearn to breathe the air of my home planet for the first time, Earth is as much my home as any other. He explains. I think that it was nice to know someone else that is the same as me. Another Namekian, who has taken the weight of the world on their shoulders. I understand, Kami. Mr. Popo says. Do you think we'll ever see Elder Muri again? I won't, Mr. Popo. My time grows short as it is, and I fear that with the universe as busy as it is, that one old Namekian's passing will matter very little. Oh, Kami. Mr. Popo says sadly. Grand Kai's planet. El Lord Beerus? Grand Kai asks. What is it? Come on, speak up. I don't have all day you know. Beerus says, turning his head towards the Grand Kai. Would, um, would you be able to defeat Mage and Bu for us? He is wreaking havoc on the entire galaxy, killing and absorbing millions. At this rate, no one in the mortal realm will be able to stop him. Grand Kai begs. Hmm. No, Beerus says lazily, from where he is laying, eating grapes. I don't save people, idiot, I destroy. It's in the title. God of Destruction. Planet Vegeta. As I'm watching my team struggle to understand decompressing their energy, seeing some mild success, I feel a familiar energy pop up on the other side of the planet. Indy Vaya. I think, as I put my finger to my forehead. Be back in a bit, guys. Keep at it. With a pop, I appear on the other side, right next to Indivaya. He looks much the same as when I last saw him, perhaps a slight bit nervous, but unhurt at the very least. Prince Indivaya, welcome back, I say, bowing slightly. KLL. Holy shit, we have a problem. He says as he turns towards me. 
Sana killed me. She's so powerful. Man, you have no fucking idea. I tell him, as I use instant transmission to pop us to the palace. A lot has happened while you were gone, Earth. I found the time just half a day later to re-enter the training room. I was very sad to see that the what if module I had previously unlocked was grayed out and unplayable again. I had hoped to abuse the potential unlock or the free wishes, but apparently the game was smarter than that. Instead, I tapped on number eight, titled Perfection, and was immediately whisked away. The world swirls into focus, and I find myself floating in the air, just five miles from the Cell Games arena. A quick pop and I was standing in it, a few feet from Cell. I could sense the power rolling off of him, almost like the lapping waves of water on a beach. He immediately turned upon sensing my arrival, raising an eyebrow at me, the half moon rising nearly directly behind him, casting him in shadow. What's this? Another scion that somehow survived. Cell asks, cocking his head to the side. Something like that, I reply. I can sense the Z fighters gearing up, launching into the sky, heading this way. My surprise appearance was a surprise last time as well, and I wasn't hiding my power level at all. Max, in base form, was just over 500M now. The Cell games aren't until tomorrow, child. I'd suggest returning then. At least you'll live another day. He says, dismissively. I push my energy, my aura exploding around me, pushing immediately to Super Scion 2. I push hard, forcing my power level up and up, till it slams into the wall at 16.1b. At his current resting power level, Cell was slightly over 8b. I knew that when pushed, he could flat out hit 30b. He was twice as strong, but at least this time I wouldn't be toyed with. No, Cell. I think I'll kill you today. I reply, the air around me crackling with my energy. Interesting. This form is different from what I've seen before now. What is it called, child? He asks, smirking. I disappearing in a burst of speed, slamming my shoulder into his chest, knocking him back hard. He flips, catching himself on the ground, as his own aura explodes around him as well. His chest carapace is slightly cracked, and I know I did a good bit of damage with that surprise attack. His power level flares harshly, and my eyes widen at what I am sensing. I stare in horror at the energy he was pumping out, as it appears to eat away at the ground around him. If my own energy was a beacon in the dark, his was the sun in the sky. I shielded my eyes as his aura expanded again, and again, engulfing the area around him. My god, what power! I thought as I pushed my own power level as high as it would go. As he launches himself forward, I scream to the sky, KO Ken, dash, but it was far too late. He was already within my guard, slamming into me like semi-truck against a bicycle. He fist smashes into my face, barely able to react as I'm launched away, smashing into the ground. I flip, rolling slightly, to land back on my feet. I bring my guard up, but Cell hasn't moved from where he hit me. His power level is nearly 45B before he begins dropping it back down. He begins to laugh before he settles back on the ground. A surprise attack? I can't say I'd have expected that from a Scion. Perhaps you aren't all the type to simply attack head-on. He smirks, his power level stopping at 30B. K.O. Ken. I yell, my golden aura flashing to burnt orange, as I again launch forward. It struggles to take, but does in the end, before I slam into him again. With the new increase, my power level has doubled to 32B, giving me the distinct advantage, and I take full use of it. Again and again, I hit him, using every bit of speed, agility, and instant transmission generated openings, to land every hit or kick that I can. I can feel myself slowing down, as Kaoken quickly drains my reserves. I push harder, but stop stock still in place, as he grabs my fist, as I'm trying to punch him again. He headbutts me, his own power level back up to 45B, my nose smashing under the force of the attack. Blood gushes down my face, filling my mouth, as he slams me to the side, launching me away. I manage to right myself, landing before I launch myself back at him. As I'm about to slam into him, I disappear with instant transmission, appearing behind him from a good distance. K.O. Ken. Times three. I yell, as my power level triples to 48B. I disappear, reappearing at his side, slamming a kick into the small of his back. Launching him forward, I follow right along, hammer fisting him into the ground. Raising both hands above my head, I flood my energy into my palms, before bringing them down to point at him. Grah! I scream, filling the crater with boiling, white-hot energy. His energy disappears after several moments, so I let the attack drop. I drop the KO Ken, before jumping back about 20 feet, opening my senses to the area around me. No pop-up has informed me that the simulation is over, so Cell must still be alive. Where are you, you bastard? I think, rotating in a circle. There. I yell, turning towards the suddenly boiling mass of energy behind me. As I turn around, a large blue beam of energy is hurtling towards me. In a split second, I yell, K.O. Ken. Times four. My aura, 
which would normally have turned burnt orange, remains resolutely gold. I have just enough time to be puzzled by that, before the attack slams into me, destroying me completely. Bing. Training exercise failed. Perfection. 12. 650 XP till LVL 17. Fuck. I yell as the training room pulls back into view. I quickly pull up my character sheet, trying to find the issue. It doesn't take me long to discover the issue at all. As it turns out, each transformation I go higher, the less access to KO Ken I will have. As a Super Scion Grade 2 and 3, I have access to all levels I've unlocked. As a Super Scion 2, I only have access to times 2 and times 3. I'm assuming that if I were to unlock Super Scion 3, I'd only have access to times 2. What about Super Scion 4? It's not in the same transformation line as 1, 2, or 3, so would it have the same limitation? I wonder. I'm also assuming that unlocking the higher level Super KO Ken feats would raise the limits for the further transformations. I think over the situation for a bit, before shrugging it off. Level 20 is miles ahead, as I've been struggling to get to 17 for nearly a year now. I can only hope that by getting back into the gravity chamber and upping my strength and endurance to the current maximum, that it will be enough. Bu is coming, and we are wholly unprepared. Frisia base 117A. Okay, show me again? Kakarot asks, watching me intensely. I let my body expand, as I decompress my energy again. It's kinda tough to do this over and over, but I know that Kakarot is a very visual learner. He stares, cocking his head to the side before he closes his eyes. I start letting the energy pour out of me, as I make the jump to Super Scion 2. It isn't necessary to go to Grade 2, or Grade 3 to go Super Scion 2, but it felt easier the first time, to explain it that way. I expel it all, cresting into Super Scion 2. Makes sense now. I ask. Oh. You're expelling the energy that you normally use to pump up your muscles. Kakarot says as his muscles start to bulge. I stare in amazement as he progresses into Grade 2, then immediately Grade 3. He huffs a few times before I can sense his energy pouring off of him in waves. The air around him begins sparking, flashing, as his aura crashes against my own. There is almost an audible hum, as the light air between us practically burns with the energy we're putting off. His hair rises slowly, as though the static in the air is affecting it, spiking, becoming harsher. Holy fuck, man. I knew it'd be easier for you, but even I didn't expect you to get it on the first try. I say as his energy finally settles. Wow. He says, breathing in deeply. This is the most amazing thing I've ever felt. It takes some getting used to. Be careful, though. It messes with your emotions, pushing you to be very confident. Cocky even, which we don't need. I explain. He smirks for a moment before disappearing, the air cracking as his fist passes through the space my head just was. I'm rolling forward, my aura flaring around me, as I hop up, disappearing with instant transmission. I appear to his side, coming in low with a kick. He catches it, lifting me into the air, tossing me away. Crack. 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 The air is being torn apart around us as we meet in the sky high above the ground, matching punches and kicks to blocks and dodges. The battle rages for several minutes before I manage to break Kakarot's guard, a right cross catching him across the chin, snapping him around. He disappears into instant transmission, as I do as well. We meet again at the ground, our punches connecting, the pressure snapping the ground around us for hundreds of feet into dust. As the dust hangs in the air, swirling around us, the maelstrom of energy pouring from our bodies reaches a boiling point, electricity arcing between us. The snap and crackle of the electricity is in slow motion, as Kakarot catches me with a kick to the stomach. He spins in place as I duck under his backhand, my fist burying into his side as he rotates. His body follows the impact, launching him away. I drop a hand to my side, forming a boiling mass of energy. Let's see what you make of this, Kakarot. I yell, thrusting my hand forward. He spins, bringing his hands forward as the beam flies right for him. Ah! He yells, releasing his own beam. They meet in air, exploding in a massive ball of energy, scouring the land all around it. The wall of energy approaches swiftly, as I pop away with instant transmission. I reappear half a mile away, atop an outcropping of rock. Huff, huff, huff. I'm practically gasping as I turn to Kakarot, standing a few feet away, his hands on his knees breathing heavily. Good workout, Kakarot, I say, dropping Super Saiyan 2. Nodding, Kakarot drops the transformation, nearly collapsing from the loss of energy. I flop down, sitting on the ground, catching my breath. I can't believe how strong that form makes me, Kakarot says as he turns towards me. I couldn't believe how powerful I felt when I went to what you called Grade 2 Super Saiyan, but this form is an entirely different level. It is. I reply. I hop back onto my feet, walking to the end of the outcropping. I stare out for a moment, wondering if I should say it. I nod once, before turning back to Kakarot. What would you say if I told you we could one day go even further? Planet Vegeta. 
I'm laying in bed, just sensing the planet around me, concentrating on one energy signature, then another, back and forth, feeling the people move around. I can't help but feel a kinship with these people. Ten years I'd spent here, and I'd come much further than I ever did in my first life. I had respect, I had power, so much to fight for, even if it is just a game. I think, rolling over. Bu is out there, doing who knows what, potentially gathering power. I have so much work to do, but I can't even be certain that it will ever be enough. Wait. Holy fuck I forgot to tell King Kai about Bu. I say, jumping out of bed. With a singular pop, I disappear. King Kai's planet. I reappear with another pop, feeling around. Krillin and Tien are sparring, jumping back and forth, sending blasts of energy at each other. Hey guys. I call out, getting their attention. KLL. Krillin calls out, landing near me. What brings you here? I was looking for King Kai. Is he not here? I ask. Nah man, he left about a week ago. He said he needed to speak with the Grand Kai. Tien explains. Oh well alright. I can go visit him there. I say, concentrating on the largest concentration of power levels in other world. By the way guys, your power levels have grown immensely. Keep it up. Grand Kai's planet. I reappear with another pop. Dodging to the left as I reappeared in the middle of a sparring match. With a quick apology, I run off, hoping to come across someone I recognize from canon that can point me towards King Kai. Sadly, the place is massive, and there are quite literally hundreds of thousands of people milling about. While only those that are the best of the best could ever come train on Grand Kai's planet, after hundreds of thousands of years, you are guaranteed to get many people. I jump around for a bit, flying from place to place, before quickly becoming lost. Three hours later, fuck this place is massive. I yell, hanging my head. Can I help you? A voice asks from behind me. I whip around, having not sensed anyone standing there, and find myself standing face to face with one of the little ghosts that sometimes float around. Ah, yes, I'm looking for the Grand Kai's palace. King Kai is supposedly there, and I really need to speak to him. I tell him, uhu. -huh. Well, as anyone could tell you, to get to the palace, fly south. It's at the southernmost tip of the planet. If you go south, you can't miss it. It tells me, bouncing in place. I stare at it for a moment. Oh, okay. Guess I should have asked someone earlier than now. Thanks. I hop into the air, turning south, before blasting off in that direction. It only takes me another hour to reach the rather obvious palace, and with a flip, I land in the courtyard. Looking around, the place is rather barren in ornamental design. I suppose the Grand Kai isn't one for the trappings of his office. A quick peeks around, and I quickly find what I'm looking for. Rather easy, when King Kai is having a yelling match with the short Kai. Which one was that again? I think as I approach. Hey, King Kai. I call out as I jog over. They both turn to me, with King Kai immediately paling to almost white. K King Kai, are you okay? I ask, stepping back. Why you fool? What are you doing here? You need to leave right now. King Kai almost snarls at me. I need to tell you something really quickly, and then I will, I promise. I know I shouldn't have come to the Grand Kai's planet, but I really needed to talk to you. I tell him, wondering what the big deal was. You little fool idiot. You have no idea what you've walked in on. King Kai says, what the fuck is happening today? I think, the day really can't get any weirder. Ah yes, this must be the Scion, says a voice from behind me. Base. The air around his form almost burns, the little bit of energy that leaks out from under his control scorching the air. He sits cross-legged, floating within a translucent orb, searching the cosmos for more signs of life. He doesn't appear to breathe, yet the ship around him flexes as though the air pressure changes in massive swings. The ship containing him flies onwards, continuing its trek across the stars. Planet Vegeta, Bara lands, flipping through the air, as the machine launching blasts of energy at his back. At eight times local gravity, Bara can really feel the burn as he pushes his body to the brink. Sweat pours down his body in buckets as he dodges, flinging himself to the side. He has to fight his instinct to fly, as he knows he won't gain any real benefit from it. Fuck. He thinks as one of the blasts catches him, spinning him around, throwing him off his target. He tries to correct in midair, but another blast slams into him. Another quickly follows, slamming him into the wall. He blinks against the pain, seeing another set of blasts coming his way. With a shout, his aura explodes around him, his body expanding, bioelectricity arcing along the edges. His hair spikes, the blasts slamming into him, glancing off. Simulation off. He yells, turning the machine off. He drops to the ground, letting the transformation drop, simply laying there for a moment. His hand shakes, before he clenches it hard, stopping the tremor in place. He takes a few more moments, before he climbs back to his feet, wiping the sweat from his forehead. Simulations start. Grand Kai's planet. I turn around slowly, feeling my heart drop. 
I recognize that voice and know that I'm moments from being obliterated. Quest success. Story quest. Long-term goal. Seek out the destroyer. Reward 1000000 XP. 978 550 XP till 1117. Hmm. He doesn't seem to be much King Kai. You really think he could ever beat Mage and Bu? Beerus asks. W wait. You guys already know about Bu? I ask incredulously. Why didn't you tell me, King Kai? What the fuck? Show some respect, brat. We're gods, so of course, we knew Bu had been released. King Kai yells at me. Quiet, Beerus says, silencing everyone immediately. His tail flicks for a moment, studying me. Something is off about you. Your energy is different. He says, quite literally sniffing the air. I say nothing before I try to use observe on him. His eyes widen the moment I do, vanishing. His palms slamming into my chest so quickly that I didn't even realize he had moved. You have awoken. HP fully restored. My eyes open, and I find myself being held in midair by my throat. I can't breathe, the grip so tight that it feels as though the blood isn't even quite flowing to my brain. I'll give you one chance to explain what that was, Scion, Beerus says, his grip tightening. I'd suggest you don't waste the chance. Planet Vegeta, 12 hours prior. Father, Indivaya says, bowing slightly as he enters the throne room. Son, I can't tell you how happy I am to see you, Vegeta says, approaching him. Father, KLL has filled me in on what has been happening. Do we have a plan to deal with the monster Bu? Indivaya asks. We're working several angles. Did he tell you of Broly? Vegeta says as they sit down. He did. Indivaya says nothing else, simply looking around the room. He's uncontrollable, but I think we may be able to fix it. We've come a very long way in science, from the early days of our race, on top of having the entirety of Frisia's empire at our fingertips. We will make it work. Vegeta explains, pulling up a file on his tablet. Is there anything else I should know about father? Indivaya asks. Vegeta is silent for a moment before asking, Tell me, son, what is more important in your opinion, the empire or the people within it? Indivaya thinks over the question for a minute before answering, Father, I'd say that the people are more important. The empire could fall, but as long as the people remain, the empire could be remade. You can't rule a dead race. Vegeta nods before standing, Come with me, son. Indivaya follows his father through several corridors, entering through a door he didn't even know existed. A short walk later, they find themselves standing in a room filled with computer equipment. Staring around in wonder, Indivaya asks Vegeta what it is. This, Indivaya, is how we track what I believe to be the biggest threat to our race, Vegeta explains. Tracking what, father? Indivaya asks, fearing the answer. Vegeta points towards a monitor on the far end, motioning for Indivaya to take a look. Approaching, Indivaya reads for several moments, before turning back. Father, you can't be serious. Indivaya whispers, Grand Kai's planet. Beerus drops me to the ground, where I crumble, gasping for breath. I may not need to breathe, but it certainly feels like it. Well, Beerus asks, I have the ability to read information about people. I gasp out my voice raspy. Beerus stares down at me, watching me closely. Useless. He turns back to the Kais, addressing them. This isn't the one I was looking for, North Kai. I would say I was disappointed, but I didn't expect much from you in the first place. He looks around momentarily. Whis, get over here, we have places to go. Coming, my lord. Whis calls back, from where he was tasting some of the food laid out. What did you call this one again? Cooked grouse? Such a fantastic flavor. MMMMMM. Whis now. Beerus yells, whipping his tail impatiently. I almost died again just now. I thought watching them go. I climb back to my feet before turning to King Kai. The hell was that, King Kai? That was Beerus, god of destruction, KLL. He replies, lamely. I know who it was, I meant, why was he here? I explain. He was looking for someone. That doesn't matter, though. What does matter is that you're here. Are you stupid? Were you dropped on your head as a child? What could have possibly passed through that small brain of yours? To make you think to come to the Grand Kai's planet was a good idea. King Kai yells at me. I was coming to warn you about Bu, asshole. How was I supposed to know that you already knew? You didn't exactly see fit to tell me. On top of that, it's easier for you to contact me than it is for me to contact you. A three-second conversation could have changed all of this. I yelled back. We continued to yell back and forth for a time, trading insults, till we were both gasping for breath. All right, King Kai, I need to go. Please contact me next time there is an emergency. I ask nicely. Fine. Now get out of here, brat. He says, turning away. Grand Kai's planet. He's not even close, North Kai. Grand Kai said, frowning, seeing KLL disappear. I know. But I also can't help but feel like there is more to him than even we can see. King Kai says as they all begin making their way inside. If the Supreme Kai grants him training, maybe he'll surprise us all? Planet Vegeta. 
As I reappear above my home, my vision shifts, fading away. Mind's eye activate, flash. I find myself standing on a war-torn battleground. The land around me as far as the eye can see decimated. Smoke billows from large gouges in the dirt cracks, spreading out like massive lines of a spider web. I'm holding my arm at my side, the bone within feeling crushed. My aura burns around me, sparks of electricity snapping in the air around me. Mind's eye deactivate, flash. I jerk as I snap out of the vision. Fuck, I need to get into the gravity chamber now. I can't afford to waste any more time. I say as I disappear once again. I reappear several hundred miles away, at the training location that houses the gravity chambers. Thankfully, being who I am, I don't need to wait to use a chamber. They quickly clear one for me, allowing me to enter and lock it from within. I bring up the level up screen and quickly swipe through. I was almost certain I was about to die, but the chance to finally level up after over a year is nothing to be shy about. And one million experience at that. I had completely forgotten about that quest. That was like five years ago. I think as I tap on the flashing indicator, it only takes a few moments to realize that the huge influx of experience was enough to level me up three times, from 16 to 19. The boost to my power from that alone was huge, that I can only imagine what my power level will be when I max my stats in the chamber. Time is running out fast, and I don't have a plan that leads to victory. I step out of the gravity chamber just six days later. My clothes are in tatters, shredded in places, and burned in others. Thanks to my ability to sleep off injuries, I look perfectly fine, however. The two scions standing guard outside of the chamber salute before I pop away using instant transmission. A quick shower at my apartment and a change of armor has me popping away to Earth. A silent walk and I'm in the training room, activating perfection. The room swirls around me, depositing me within the simulation a few miles away from Cell's arena. I sense around me, feeling out the location of each of the Z warriors. I wish I could convince them to team up with me, but defeating Cell was a matter of pride to them, a battle that was long awaited. I suppose for me, it's the same way. I think as I take off, a few seconds later I land in the arena, Cell standing silently in the center. My power level in my base form, with my max stats, is a little less than 1.5b. Nothing to be ashamed of, but I can't exactly call home about it either. What do you want, child? Cell asks, eyeing me. I've come to show you something, Cell, I tell him. As you know, Scions have a base form. I'm currently in my own. Yes, yes, do get on with it. Cell orders, showing his impatience and boredom. This, I say, pushing into Super Scion, is a Super Scion. For most of the Scions, you know, this is as far as they go. I explain. The transformation has pushed my power level up to nearly 3B. But again, Cell was sitting at 16B just resting. I knew from previous experience that he could go as high as 40B and potentially even higher. My energy starts to increase, the energy filling my muscles. Trunks, Vegeta, and Goku have each. I say, forcing my body into grade 3, reach this form in some way. I huff out. It's impractical and in some ways useless. The increase in power, while nice, slows you down. I explain. Child, I already know this. I do not need to be lectured on what I already know. Get to the point, or I'll kill you where you stand. Cell orders, uncrossing his arms for the first time. Hee <laughs> hee. Fine Cell, I'll get to the point. I say as I start letting all the decompressed energy exit my body. The air around me starts to spark, as my power level shoots up massively. The ground around us shakes and cracks, as I start pumping out a massive amount of power. The four pillars on the corners are tossed away, and the area around us flattens into dust. You unreal. Cell says as he senses my true power. This, however, is the form of a scion that has ascended again. A scion that has pushed past their body's limitations. I tell him, watching him closely. As I give one final push, my power level maxing out at 43B, I finish. This cell is a super scion too. I disappear with a flicker of energy, slamming my fist into his face before he had even managed to move a muscle, knocking him back and out of the arena. As he tumbles, his own energy flares roughly, shooting up to 45B. He quickly rights himself, landing softly on the ground. This won't be enough to defeat me, child. I don't know who you are or where you came from, but I am the perfect weapon. Cell roars. No cell, you're wrong. I am the perfect weapon. Super KO Ken. Times three. I yell back. My aura flashes to burnt orange as my body is flooded with energy. Everything slows to a crawl as my knee slams into Cell's face. With the disparity between our power levels, the damage I inflict is massive. At 130B, his 45B was a drop in the bucket. His face smashed in, I spin like a top, my kick damn near beheading him, launching him away. I catch up to him before he's moved even 10 feet, multiple punches raining down on his body. Several more flashes of movement, and I've slammed him into the ground, a massive crater forming around his body. I walk down the sloped edge, sensing him healing slowly. 
This is the end for you, Cell, I tell, raising both hands. He turns his head, his eyes have healed, but his mouth lagging behind. As the fear and anger are evident, two balls of energy form in my palms, filling the area with a bright green light. Goodbye, Cell, I announce, releasing the massive amount of energy I had built up. The attack burns for only three real-time seconds, before the world pauses around me, fading out. Bing. Training exercise finished. Perfection. Kill Cell. Plus 300, 000 XP. Bonus. Perfect. Plus 50, 000 XP. Et hundra chutiet koma fira hundra femtu XP til LVL shugu. The world fades back into view, and I'm already smiling. After getting the beat down several times by Cell, to completely outclass him, I feel really good about myself. I pull up the list of simulations to see that a no new ones had been added. With a frown, I consider working back through some of the others and unlock more what if exercises, but decided that there are other things I probably should be doing. With a soft pop, I disappear. Planet Namek. Another pop and I'm thousands of light years away, my feet sinking lightly into the soft ground below me. New Namek looks exactly like the old one did, thankfully. I can sense Muri in the distance, so I pop off again, reappearing at his side. Elder Muri, I say as a way of greeting. KLL, welcome back to Namek. What brings you all the way out here? He asks, from where he sat watching the planet below him. I've come to ask to use the Dragon Balls when they are ready next cycle, I explain, sitting down next to him. What would you ask for? Muri asks, after a moment. I would use one wish, to gain some knowledge that I need. That's it, I think. I say. I see, he says, turning back to look out at his planet. I think KLL that I can allow that. You have been very helpful to me, and it's through your efforts that I will be able to revive a portion of my people. With time, I may even be able to rebuild my race. I think allowing you a wish is fair. Thank you. When will they be usable next? I ask standing up. They were last used almost a third of a cycle ago. I shall contact you when they are ready and gathered. He replies. Thank you again, I reply, before disappearing with a pop. Base. Majin Bu rises from his throne-like seat to stare out into the open space before his ship. He can sense life in the far-off distance again, which was becoming exceedingly rare in this portion of the galaxy. Without a word, his ship begins adjusting its course to head in that direction. The screen updates, showing arrival in 15 days. Nodding, Majin Bu returns to his seat, staring out into space once more. A slash N, and back at it again. Things are rapidly ramping up, and KLL is working hard to increase his chances of survival. With Bu on the prowl, KLL knows he's in for the fight of his life. What does Vegeta fear? How far is Bara going to push himself? Has Bu come across the science at last? Find out next time on Dragon Ball RPG Rebirth. P.S. For those asking, here is the most up-to-date copy of KLL's character sheet. As you'll see, I've made some changes to parts and edited how the information is presented. Don't hesitate to drop me a review with any questions or concerns. Name KLL. Title World Destroyer. Race Scion. Age 15 years. Status Alive. LVL 19. 2 528. 550 slash 2 700 000. Et hundra XP til LVL shugu. Stats. S. 8. Plus 442. 450. P4. Plus 128. 132. E8. Plus 442. 450. C3. Plus 85. 88. I. 6. Plus 66. 72. A6. Plus 182. 188. LHA5 plus 6065. Health. Strength X Endurance X Level X 20. 450 by 450 X 19 by 20 equals 76 950 000 HP. Energy. Scion. Strength X Endurance equals Base Energy. Base Energy X Battles equals Energy Regen. Energy Regen X Level equals Power Level. Power Level X Energy Modification equals Total Power. 450 times 450 is equal to 202,500. 202,500 times 8.0 is equal to 1,620,000. 1,620,000 times 19 is equal to 30,780,000. 3780 000 x 46.20 equals 1, 422, 036, 000 slash 00 asterisk 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 asterisk. Base energy, 202,500. Energy Regan, 1,620,000. Power level, 30,780,000. Energy modifier, 46.20. Final power level, 1422-036-000 slash 00 asterisk 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 asterisk. Final power level with super scion multiplier, 2961-036-000 slash u asterisk.
Final power level with Super Scion 2 multiplier. 43, 387, 488, 000. Carrot hashtag 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 oo asterisk 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 asterisk. Feats Scion Elite, a drastic loss. Inner Eye, Inner Eye Yex, Enhanced Senkai, Energy Suppression, Energy Suppression Yex, Energy Sense LVL3, Oxygen? Who needs it? LVL1, Oxygen? Who needs it? LVL2, Oxygen? Who needs that? LVL3, Strength of Conviction, Gamer's Mind V2, Lucky Shot, Second Wind, A Chance for Regrowth, Desperation. Remaining Feats, 3. Special Feats, Super Kaoken X4. Perks the Gamer, How Old Am I? Bonus Feats, X3. Special Abilities. Zenkai, Healing from Less Than 30% HP adds 0.1 to your Energy Modifier. Scion Prowess. Every battle lends to your strength. Every battle you participate in, in which you damage someone past 80% HP, adds 1 to your battle count. Inner Eye possesses the third eye, in the middle of the forehead. Plus 1 to Perception, minus 1 to Charisma, plus 0.2 to Energy Modifier. Unlocks Feet Energy Sense LVL2. Super Scion adds plus 50 to your energy modifier while transformed. Super Scion 2nd grade adds plus 15 to your energy modifier while transformed. Super Scion 3rd grade adds plus 15 to your energy modifier while transformed. Super Scion 2 adds plus 50 to your energy modifier, increases agility, adds X4 power level modifier. Spark of Divinity in times of greatest need. When protecting the life of someone that has saved yours, unlock temporary access to God Kai.